So I cruise through Facebook on a regular basis looking for bargains and things that I might be able to use or show off on the channel. Today I found a few things, although one person was advertising a broken TV for free and then when I called them they wanted money for it, so I said, yeah, right, it's broken. And they're like, well, you're going to fix it and sell it. So yeah, I'm going to fix it and give it away more than likely because used TVs aren't worth much. But what I got today, I got for free. Check this out. Before starting today's video, I have an important message from Fluke. Or any meter manufacturer, but we're going to use Fluke in this case. When the low battery indicator comes on on your Fluke meter, that means change the battery. Do not continue to use it because you will get erroneous results. Check this out. You know what this is, right? This is the one and a half volt alkaline battery. Nominal voltage, 1.5 volts. Under no load, should measure about 1.6 volts. Any questions? I have my power supply. I've got it set for six volts, 6.0. Fourteen volts. Let's set the power supply to twelve volts. Twelve point zero, twenty-eight point five. Let's set it for twenty-four volts. You see where I'm getting with this. Set for twenty-four point zero volts. Fifty-five point four. Let's crank this up as high as it will go. Thirty-two volts. Meter is measuring seventy-five. The battery indicator just showed up on this. I'll turn the power supply down to 0.1 volts. Actually, it's at zero now. But we'll set it for 0 0.5. 0 0.5 volts measuring 1.3. If your batteries are weak, change them. Do not use it. Change the battery because all of your readings will be incorrect. So that's what I'm gonna do. Made in USA, only the best. If you're wondering just how low the battery was that came out of here, it was 5.25 volts. I don't know where what voltage the low battery indicator comes on, but when the battery gets down, it's probably six volts or five volts or somewhere in there. Well, under load, it's probably dropping below, um, below five a bit, but uh, it uses as a reference. And once the voltage drops below that reference voltage, the battery is shot. I wonder what's in this cell. Is this a series of little quadruple A's? Or is it a, a flat pack? What do you guys think? Should we open it up? I'm thinking this has probably got a series of, of flat cells in it. Some of the older ones had actual, uh, had six of the, um, of the sub or triple or quadruple A, I should say, but I think this is probably um, got the flat pack system. Yep, it does. So this is uh, this is what's in this nine volt battery. Just six flat cells in series. There was a time you could open these up and get six quadruple A cells out of them. I like those ones. I used to buy them crack them open and pull the cells out because some things required AAAA cells, which is what were in a lot of these batteries, but not this particular one. Negative terminal or and positive terminal. I think that's what it is. Negative and positive. Anyway. That's not the video though. The video today is this little device that I picked up. It's a Sony media player. And I drove a long ways to get this today. Found it on Facebook. I had it advertised 10 bucks. I figured 10 bucks can't go wrong. It's a good deal. And I drove out to get it. Even got it with the remote control. The reason I got this is because, well, as you can see, first of all, it'll play anything off of a hard drive or USB. It has on the back HDMI out, optical output. It has conventional audio video at standard definition and it has component output at HD and it's got a LAN input for the, the media player side of things for playing back streaming content and it will it'll play back streaming content 
I don't know if this is going to work with Netflix anymore because Netflix keeps updating their, their codex, but um, I don't know whether it's going to do that, but I was primarily interested in it for playing back content that's on USB or hard drive. And I got it and I picked it up from the guy and uh, I gave it to me in a bag and I'm looking at it. Where is the adapter? It's got the yellow adapter, the special adapter that it's a special size and it, other adapter won't fit, you see needs a Sony adapter which is not exactly cheap so I went back and said hey man you're missing the adapter so he said I'll give you your 10 bucks back so I got it for free so we're gonna put a, a different plug on here I'm gonna put this plug on this is a plug that I got out of an old cable box that this plugs into positive negative we know what the clarity is because it's telling me right here tip is positive so let's crack this thing open and change that plug if possible. Before I get started though, I do have an axe to grind and this axe is to grind with Google and their maps. So probably many of you have already figured this out. Google Maps does not necessarily mean the shortest way to get somewhere. I think they do this on purpose. So I'm following the directions because I didn't look the address up. I didn't know exactly where it was. I just put the address into my GPS and I let Google take me there and it says we found a shorter or didn't say that we found a faster route that's going to save you a whole six minutes anyway I go the, the quickest route six minutes 55 kilometers I burned up my entire battery now normally on my plug-in hybrid I can get in the warm weather I can get 80 to 90 kilometers on a charge but today is not warm weather. It's quite chilly out today. It's pouring with rain. It's cold. I've got the heat on. I've got the lights on. I've got the wipers on. And as I say, it's cold. My battery range was only 55.1 kilometers to use my 12.7 kilowatt hour of battery power. Normally it's around 14, but again, cold temperatures, batteries put out less power. I pulled into the guy's driveway just as my car was switching over to gas. I drove back using the maps in my head. Did not use Google, I drove back. 37.8 kilometers. I used 2.8 liters of fuel driving back. Google's way, 55.1. What is it with you, Google? Why do you do this constantly? About uh, probably 12 years ago, I was in Las Vegas and I had a Tom Tom and I I put in, well, let's go home. Let's figure out the way to get home. It's going to be the quickest. So I had cranky kids that were wanting to get home. And uh, we'd been on the road for two weeks to Disneyland and everything. They, it was when my kids were like 9 and 11. And they, you know, they, they'd had enough. They just wanted to go home. Okay, we'll just put the address in. And, of course, I like listening to Hannibal Lecter talk on the GPS because I had that Hannibal Lecter voice. Well, it put me on the higher speed freeways because there are some freeways I think they're 80 or 85 miles per hour versus 55 miles per hour it put me on the faster freeways because it was gonna save one hour but it drove me an extra hundred miles well that's not really saving anything when you're driving a hundred miles and you're burning at you're getting about what 25 miles to the gallon so four extra gallons of fuel to go basically the same well to save an hour anyway that's my complaint about GPS and Google and TomTom Tom and stuff. This is a, say it's a Sony network player. It's an SMPNX20. So I'm just going to pop out the bottom. Looks like there's already a foot missing on it. Maybe somebody's been into this thing. Maybe the foot just fell out. But I'm going to pop it apart and we're going to uh, change that, that uh, power jack so that I can power this thing up and uh, operate it and See if it works. It didn't cost me anything, so that was always a good thing. You know, I would like to have the original adapter, and I actually do have an adapter that will fit it because my Blu-ray player uses the same adapter. But I'm not going to rob it from my Blu-ray player. I'll just change the adapter or change the plug on this one and uh, use a run-of-the-mill power supply because it it requires 0 0.85 amps, and this one here is a two and a half or two amps, so more than enough power not going to cause any issues whatsoever. So I'll get the screws out. Okay, does the bottom come off or does the top come off? That's what I don't know. I think 
I think the top comes off. Looks like the top comes off. What's hanging up here? Something's hanging up. Something in the side piece. Okay, there we go. All right. So there's the board and there's the plug. I think I can probably lift this board out and um, hopefully there's nothing under here but I can I can unplug these two connectors that one and this edge connector or this ribbon cable will pull out the uh, the screw on the front here and and the screw on the back and this should lift out like that this lifts out all right now I'm going to remove the existing jack from here I'll do that by we'll take off this metal bracket first that will just pop off all right now I'm going to, I'm going to uh, looks to be this is the negative terminal and this is the positive terminal here which will line up quite nice with this other jack because that's the positive terminal there. You can see the pin goes right through to the back here. This other one here is actually the, the got the switch switch between those two. So that it, if it was a battery powered device, it would pass power through a switch. But obviously on this one, it doesn't use that. It just uh, just uses the two terminals, positive and negative. So to take this one out, the easiest way to get these things out, believe it or not, is just to flow a bunch of solder over top of the existing plug that's there. Heat them up. Just flow a bunch of extra solder so you can get heat to it all at once. That way you can heat it right up and just lift it out. Just like that. And there's the old one. Now I'll take some solder wick and we'll clean up the board a bit. I hate Sony with their stupid yellow plugs. They do that so that you have to buy their adapter. And so many people don't realize that you can just change the plug. A buddy of mine had a, um, a Blu-ray player that was given to him and he, he just um, went and bought the adapter. He went and bought the, the right adapter for it and I don't know what he paid for it, but he paid more than the adapter's worth. I said, I, get a, you know, I told him, I said, why don't you just hotwire it in, you know, or, or pull the board and change the plug, but he went and bought the right adapter. Well, in this case, we're gonna put a regular standard plug in here it ain't pretty but there's enough there's enough through here that I can tack it down just like that check it for continuity there we go so that's working put the back on it again here tabs put down through the board like that there we go lines up perfect wonderful drop the board back in place
wires out of the way so they don't get trapped. Fasten the board back down, plug in the two connectors. And then the two screws in the back. Metal screw is what holds the HDMI port in place. The plastic screw the AV ports. This gives some strain relief so that you're, when you're plugging stuff in, you're not pushing it up against the board. Just like that. And then the top cover, just drop back on. Got an infrared receiver on the front here. I guess this is the, this must be the, oh, is that a, that board for it. I don't think I don't think it has um, maybe it has Wi-Fi on it. I didn't know, I didn't check. Uh, Hello, sir. I would like to tell you that your phone's ringing. Will be I don't know if this unit has has uh, Wi-Fi in it. It almost looks like these are antennas. Hmm. Fits in the front here. The top goes on. Somehow the top goes on. I do believe I've got it snapped together now. It's not all the way, it's close enough. As long as the screws go in and hold it together, and then we can power it up and test it and see whether it's working. It's supposed to play everything. Like MKV, uh, MPEG-2, MPEG-1, MP4, uh, ABC HD. It's supposed to play all the formats. So we'll find out pretty quick. Because the unit's back together, and I'll just plug it into the AV and put some on my TV because I don't, don't feel like hooking up HDMI. This television I'm using it here doesn't have HDMI, it only has uh, DVI. Okay, I've got the unit set up here, got it plugged into the TV. Just kind of shutting stuff off here. Uh, I'll plug the power cable in and let's see if it turns on. Press the power button. And is anything going to happen on this thing? Is it going to work or is it not? Okay, I think the reason why it wasn't powering up was because the jack, I had to trim the edge, trim back some of the insulation because this jack is sitting back in the chassis a little bit further than the original. It just was not making a connection. Because now when I plug it in, I see a light lighting up on the front here. As it, as it powers up. You can see the light on the front, and I didn't see that before. So let's press the power button and uh, see if we get video. Again, I haven't checked the batteries on this thing, so maybe the batteries are weak on the remote. New battery in the remote control. And it powers up. Excellent! Let's plug my little USB stick in, which has got some of my own content on here. And uh, we'll see what it does. It's booting up. Cool. Kind of almost looks like the uh, uh, Google no longer supports this app. Please re <laughs> visit YouTube. Yeah, I think probably the, the apps are probably expired on here. But BlackBerry. I guess I guess it, it, it's got the people's PC that had it before. I wonder if there's a factory reset on here, just to uh, resetting, reset to factory defaults. We'll just reset this thing to factory. Everything, all settings. I don't think Netflix will work on it. Um, Maybe if there's an update, it might. But uh, I don't think Netflix is going to work on this thing anymore. But anyway, I want to factory reset it because it now belongs to me. But let's just uh, check out... Oh, it does do a network update, so I may have to plug it in. Um, network settings. Will it do Wi-Fi? I don't think it has Wi-Fi, but let's, let's just see here. Um, oh, it does have wireless. Oh, cool. Well, let's just set up the wireless and see if it'll do an update.
scan. Okay, there we go. So I just put my Wi-Fi password in, and uh, it is now okay. So let's uh, let's go to um, see if we can do an update on here. Network update. And see if there's any updates available. Already updated. Okay. Well, I guess it's not going to. Uh, I guess it's not going to work with YouTube. I don't think. But it's okay. I didn't. I didn't want it for Netflix or our, our, our YouTube. Although it would be nice. But it says Google no longer supports this app. And I'm sure these all the rest of these are probably also um, not going to work because that's just the way that they do this crap. Right. This has a few things on it, but uh, I don't think Netflix will probably work either. I'll, I'll try launching Netflix. I I'm not expecting. Netflix. If, if YouTube won't work, I would not expect Netflix to work either. But, see I have one Blu-ray player that still supports Netflix, but my other Blu-ray player no longer supports it. So let's just see whether it will actually, a network error occurred. Yeah, so it doesn't support Netflix either, which is fine. I, I didn't pick it up for that, and I got it for free. And really, oh look, it can see my, it can see my desktop PC. So I should be able to I should be able to scan my files and my music. I don't think there's anything shared on here. Pretty sure there's nothing shared on here. Oh, there is. Cool. So if I go to that, this is playing off my will play off my PC. Cool. All right. Excellent. So I can stream off of my uh, off my computer. Uh, I don't know whether, whether these MTS files, something I shot on my camera, probably. Oh yes, my uh, marine aquarium. One early version I did of my fish tank. USB device is what I was really most interested in. Because you see, I can put in stuff on my, uh, like, my cats. These two have, were going having a good scrap. <laughs> Must have been a Nakamichi that recorded that bell with all that wow and flutter. As you can see, the cats have, have shredded my staircase. Now it has fast forward and rewind, so you can play video files just perfectly smooth. You know, I mean, that's excellent. Forward, reverse. These media players were actually quite expensive when they first came out. And say now, well, they're pretty much worthless because the things that people bought them for back then, Netflix, YouTube and stuff, and the online content was, uh, they no longer work for that. Just thanks to uh, Netflix and YouTube and Amazon Prime and stuff, they're just updating their... Uh, updating the security but as a media player for playing files that you've already got on your TV if you don't have a smart TV I mean a smart TV yes you can just take your USB stick and plug it in and you're good to go for people that don't have a smart TV this is uh, the answer to do it and like options on here so I should be able to go into repeat settings yes and I can say repeat all or repeat folder or repeat file and now when I hit the next file, I should go to the next file, my aquarium, next file. Of 
course, this is the video that I use for checking out or testing that uh, that DVD recorder at the different speeds, right? But it'll play pretty much every type of file that there is. It's one of my productions. The Rainstorm. Another one. This is the Vancouver Aquarium shot on a 3-chip HDV camera. Oregon Coast. This one was edited when I was using Avid to put together my videos. And then I, I, I learned, I started on Premiere, and then I did some stuff under Avid, and then I came back to Premiere. And you know, Avid had some really nice titles so that they would do really nice titles. This was Premiere. No, this was Avid as well that I did this. Because they had those fancy animated graphics that uh, Premiere, this was just Premiere that did this. Well, this was actually Photoshop. This was shot on a still camera, so there was no video camera used at all on this specific video, uh, time-lapse stuff. It was all shot on a Sony Alpha 77. In uh, These were all shot as raw images at uh, 24 megapixels. And then each file was processed with uh, Photoshop where I could adjust the contrast and the color and, and the depth I could do all that in uh, Photoshop and then render it out as individual JPEG files. Actually, I think I rendered it out as a movie in 4K in Photoshop. And then I imported it back into Premiere to um, put the music on it. I think that's what I did. I did this 10 years ago. It was like, this was like my first attempt at doing a time lapse using my Alpha 77 still camera. Turned out pretty good, actually. That's a fisheye lens. Extremely wide angle, well, fisheye. You can see, I mean, look at the distortion it adds, but it, it just adds something to the image. The camera's almost pointing up in the sky at that point. It's po almost pointing, it was almost pointing straight up. Anyway, press the home button and it takes me back to uh, to that. I don't know if anything else is, is going gonna, is gonna to work. Crackle probably won't work either. Yeah, see, it just says a network error has occurred. I think probably all of these, uh, all of these are not going to work. So it's obviously connected by Wi-Fi. That's working. Okay, I got some stuff here that I, this is stuff I've downloaded. Oh, there's a few things on here. Ah, that'd be a good one. The late, great Joey D. Francesco, probably one of the best Hammond B3 players to ever live. And uh, Dennis Chambers, uh, this was a while ago, this one here. Anyway, uh, we know that it does work. My two old Siamese cats, these ones are both dead. This is a long time ago I recorded this. Okay, anyway. Um, as you can see from the date, that stuff I recorded, 2014. Anyway, there's my little Sony media player that I picked up for free. The guy was originally asking 10 bucks for it, but because he lost the adapter, he gave it to me. I just changed out the power connector 
If you've got one of these Sony Blu-ray players or one of these media players and it's got this oddball special plug, don't go and spend money and buy a new adapter. Go and get a plug and change it. It's pretty simple. Thanks for watching.